Today I'll be reviewing an adjustable desk from an artist's perspective. Is a standing desk more comfortable for doing creative work? Is it worth the hefty price tag? Before you lay down some serious scratch on a new slab, you'll want to watch this review. This is not a sponsored video, I bought this desk with my own money. Shoot, I don't even have an affiliate link. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. This is the Very Desk Pro Desk. There are a lot of adjustable desks out there that look like this, and from what I can tell, they are quite similar to each other. I chose this desk over desks like it because it has a crossbar for added stability and because it supports a taller than average height. As an artist, I spend a lot of my time drawing, so a wobbly desk would be a distraction. And because I'm tall, I don't want to have to slouch while standing to use my desk. But what sealed the deal is that I could buy this desk locally at an office supply store and pick it up curbside. It came in two large and very heavy boxes, so if you don't have a way to transport bulky stuff, I'd have it delivered. Because the top is quite heavy, you may want one other person to help you move the box and top, but I was able to assemble the desk myself. This desk was super easy to put together, and I hate putting stuff together. The instructions were clear and simple. It was pretty much sliding two legs into place, adding a few bolts, connecting two cables, sliding on the cable tray, and hammering in a crossbar. After a few simple key commands to enable the lift, the desk was ready for use. It took about five or 10 minutes to assemble, not counting the time it took to put everything onto the desk. To put that in perspective, the other standing desk I was considering had a tutorial that was 30 minutes long. The very desk tutorial is only one minute long. Considering how similar these desks are, I think I made the right choice. The very desk comes with some accessories, a few Velcro cable ties, one cable tray, two hooks you can use to dangle stuff, one rubbery coaster, a rubber mallet for whacking moles, and a hex wrench. All decent quality, I might add. I think these accessories are great. It gets you thinking about how you can further customize your desk. Unlike most products, I actually used most of the accessories that came with this desk. The only one worth mentioning is the cable tray. This does a good job of routing the cables and concealing excess slack, but as you can see from the underside of my desk, it's still possible to make your cables look like the ass of a yak. I could do a much better job of tidying things up here. From what I can tell, this desk has an excellent build quality. The top is heavy and feels very solid. I didn't have a choice in colors because this was the only one left in the store, but the fake wood pattern looks nice, and I prefer it over a black or white surface that I'd be constantly worried about scuffing up. I've moved my Cintiq around quite a bit, and I don't see any noticeable scratches, but I'm also not going out of my way to drag it across the desk. The surface is made from reclaimed wood, I think it's a high quality laminate and not solid pieces of wood. It has a bit of wood grain texture that you can feel with your fingers. There is a bit of JPEG compression in the wood grain graphic, and I feel like the image could have been slightly higher resolution. No, I'm just kidding. I think as far as fake wood patterns go, this one looks pretty good. The legs are made of steel and have a nice color and style. I like the design overall, and it doesn't look as generic as some of the other adjustable desks. It's hard to know how long desks like this will last, but I imagine it's probably long enough to make the investment worthwhile. The warranty is five years for this desk. The more you use the lift, the more you're going to wear down the mechanism, so don't use the lift just for fun. Since assembly was fairly simple, I'm sure you could keep the tabletop and just replace the legs, but it's unclear whether or not you can order parts on the company's website. The question is that after five or 10 years, what will you be left with? If the lift burns out and you cannot adjust the desk, are you just left with a desk that's stuck at one height? If so, hopefully it's a useful height and you can still use it as a desk. A broken and heavy desk will be difficult to repurpose and you'll probably have to disassemble it and recycle the parts. A traditional desk doesn't come with the risk of mechanical wear, so if you're looking to buy a desk that's going to last more than five years, then perhaps an adjustable desk is not a good idea. I have a feeling this desk will probably last more than five years, and even if it doesn't, it's worth it to be more comfortable while working. 200 pounds is the maximum weight limit for this desk. If you exceed the weight limit, a warning will appear on the display and the desk will not lift. On my desk is an Ergotron LX arm attached to a Cintiq 27 QHD, 
a 24 inch monitor, keyboard, mouse, stream deck, keyboard tray, microphone, microphone arm, camera, tripod, and some desk accessories. So far, I have not exceeded the weight limit. This desk features three programmable height settings, and you can adjust the desk from 25.5 inches to 50.5 inches high. It's as easy as pressing a couple of buttons to program each preset, almost as easy as clicking the like button on this video. I've created presets for my most common positions. First, I have the sitting position with clearance for the chair arms under the keyboard. I use this position for general tasks. I can do just about anything in this default position. Since my over-the-shoulder camera cannot easily raise and lower with the desk, I have to record in the sitting position if I'm recording an over-the-shoulder view. Otherwise, when recording myself from the front, the camera can lift with the desk on a tripod. The second preset is standing with the keyboard at a level that is comfortable for typing. I can raise my Cintiq to eye level since it's on an arm. This blocks most of my secondary display, but I can still peek over it if I have to. I can also lay the Cintiq flat if I want to draw in a horizontal position. Another downside is that my speakers are blocked, but I can easily switch to headphones when I'm doing audio work. The third preset goes a bit higher and makes it more comfortable to use multi-touch, or I can draw in a vertical position on my Cintiq. If I had more presets, I would use them, but I can do with only three. It's easy enough to set the position manually using the up and down buttons. The control keys and functions are fairly standard for a desk like this. I don't see much of a difference between similarly equipped desks, so this is probably a standard lift mechanism. I've seen some desks with a one push button that you don't have to hold down. I would definitely enjoy a feature like that because it does feel like a nuisance to have to hold the button down, but I use it as an opportunity to stretch and move a standing mat. While a one push button is more convenient, holding the button down is safer. Lift desks can be dangerous and destructive, so holding the button down gives you more time to react if something gets snagged, yanked, or crushed. Sometimes I adjust the arms on my chair, and there has been at least one occasion where I've lowered the desk and almost made contact with the keyboard tray. The keyboard tray probably would have been damaged had I not used my cat-like reflexes to take my finger off the button. To be fair, the one push controls usually include collision detection, but you can never be too safe, especially if you have kids or pets. Fortunately for objects and people alike, you can program a maximum and minimum height so that you can't move the desk so far down that it destroys life or property. And if you like having knees, you'll probably want to set this so that it doesn't go below your knees. Also, look around your desk area and take into consideration objects that may come into contact with the desk. After setting up everything on your desk, carefully test the minimum and maximum height to ensure the cords are able to extend and nothing contacts the desk. Adding cable clips really helps to keep everything in place. Be sure to read the manual for this desk before using it. There are probably some more common sense warnings that I didn't cover that you should be aware of. This is my deadliest review. The maximum height for this desk is higher than I would use for everyday tasks, but it's nice to have some extra clearance to clean under the desk or connect components. Or you might want to game or watch a video standing up. The lift mechanism makes noise. I wouldn't rank it as loud or quiet, it's just what you would expect from a mechanical lift. There is a sort of jolt that only happens when the lift has been inactive for a period of time. I think this is a braking system that is disengaging. But most of the time, all you will hear is the smooth whirring sound of the motor. The motion is fairly gentle when adjusting the height. Obviously, including a drink coaster is a sign of confidence, so the lift is not going to jostle your desk around enough to spill a drink or topple ordinary desk items. Unfortunately, even with the crossbar, this desk is not as stable as my old desk was when I had it wedged against the walls on all sides. But some instability is to be expected from a standing desk. This desk feels wobbly whether you have it at a low setting or a high setting, but it wobbles slightly more the higher you extend it. Don't get me wrong, it's not excessively wobbly, and probably wouldn't be enough to bother me if not for the fact that I record myself drawing on my Cintiq, and when I time-lapse the recording, you can see the tablet jittering a bit. That's a really nitpicky thing that probably wouldn't be an issue for most artists. 
I'm okay with trading some stability for better ergonomics. The amount of weight and the types of devices you place on the desk can also amplify how much it wobbles. For example, if you have mic stands or ergotron arms holding up heavy devices, those objects will wobble around as well. It's best to only place essential objects on the desk to minimize weight and wobble. While my new desk is great, it's missing a few features that I had become accustomed to with my old desk. The depth of the adjustable desk is about the same as my old desk, but the width is a foot shorter. There is a wider 60 inch version, but I think the 48 inch version fits better in my studio. Because of this difference in width, my third monitor feels a little crowded, but if it bothers me enough, I may put it on an Ergotron arm to swing it over more to the right. Unlike some of the other adjustable desks out there, this one is not fully customizable. One of the other desks I was considering offered all sorts of add-ons like grommets, computer tower mounts, and USB charging. But it was also much more expensive. I can do without some of that stuff, and I was able to customize the desk myself by purchasing a few inexpensive add-ons. First is a microphone arm to mount my microphone to my desk. Previously, I had my mic on a boom stand, but it makes more sense to have it mounted to my desk so I can lower and raise the mic and the desk together at the same time. The mic stand works great. I can move the mic into position when I need it and then tuck it out of the way so it doesn't block my secondary monitor. My old desk also had a keyboard tray. The new one does not. Fortunately, I found a keyboard tray that clamps on, so I added that. The clamps interfere slightly with the Cintiq where it rests on the edge of the desk, making it difficult to place it flush against the desk but they also protect the edge of the desk from the Cintiq. Another downside to using the keyboard tray is that it feels crowded with the mouse, keyboard, and stream deck, but I've adapted to it. Adding some cable clips helps keep everything from moving around too much. A wider tray would have been nice, but also may have covered the desk control buttons. The included cable ties weren't enough to tame all of the cables coming and going from my desk, so I purchased a few inexpensive adhesive cable clips that work really well to tidy up my cables and keep them from falling off my desk when I raise and lower it. Do keep in mind that I'm doing this without knowing whether or not it will damage the desk surface when I remove the adhesive. So don't try this at home if you're worried about damaging the desk. As far as I can tell in the short term, it just leaves some adhesive residue that you can rub off. Now I'd like to share some of the benefits I've experienced by moving to an adjustable desk. To put things in perspective, for the last 10 years, I had been using a desk and chair that were not built for someone who is my height. My old desk was pretty low to begin with, but it had a keyboard tray that forced me to lower my chair to its lowest position. Even with that adjustment, I still barely fit my legs underneath the desk, and I had to slouch a lot. It's no coincidence that for the past 10 years, I've also experienced intermittent back pain. There are days when I can hardly bend my back. Prior to purchasing this desk, I had gone a week or so with consistent back pain, so I realized I finally needed to make a change. The adjustable desk allows me to adjust my position as often as I like without too much interruption. It's really easy to raise the desk and stand when my back starts to feel sore from sitting, or when I feel fatigued from standing, I just lower the desk. I have everything set up so my essential gear moves with the desk, and I don't have to stop what I'm doing to get comfortable. Even if I never used a standing position, I can set the desk to an optimal height for my chair and keyboard tray. I don't have to contort my body to fit the desk, the desk fits me. As a tall person, it's a rare treat to use something that fits your body type. After the first day of using a standing desk, my back felt instantly less sore and I had more flexibility. And no, I'm not exaggerating, that's just good evidence of how bad my posture had become. After a few more days, my back still felt good, I was able to bend my back a lot more, however, my feet started to hurt. I had been using a mat to stand on, but what I was missing were shoes. Since I started wearing shoes, my feet no longer hurt. Another benefit is that when I'm standing, it's easier to be active. I can step around a bit, dance to new jack swing, or stretch to make sure I'm not being sedentary for too long. Initially, it took a week or so to get used to working while standing. It was distracting at first, but now I'm quite comfortable doing anything standing that I was doing while sitting. Best of all, I feel happier and more motivated to work when I don't have to dread sitting in an uncomfortable position for long periods of time. What prompted me to buy this desk was an upcoming project where I'd be recording an 18-hour video course. 
Because this is a project I do every year, I knew I was in for some back pain. As you can imagine, this is one of the most intensive projects I can work on, so I was able to really test the performance of this desk and evaluate how it helped my back pain during a strenuous workflow. While recording the course this time around, it was a dream come true to change positions anytime I felt like I had been sitting for too long. My back and ass actually wrote me a thank you card and made me dinner. Whenever I moved between tasks like recording, editing, and writing the script, I changed positions using the three height presets so that I was always comfortable. As of the making of this video, I have been using the standing desk for about six months, and I'm very happy with my purchase. I'll admit that I was skeptical at first about how much of a difference an adjustable desk would make, but by the end of the course, my back felt better, not worse. So I'd say the very desk met my expectations in terms of improving my comfort. I haven't had the same back pain that I started with. I adjust the desk throughout the day, so I'm happy to say it's not a fad feature that you'll lose interest in. It's actually a great feature that improves your workflow. My only regret is that I didn't buy this desk a long time ago, but at $700 to $1,000, it was hard to justify spending that much on a desk. In terms of upgrading my gear, a new computer or camera just seemed like more bang for my buck. You artists do yourself a favor and buy a comfortable desk. It doesn't have to be this desk or even an adjustable desk, but something that will allow you to sit or stand comfortably for long periods of time. If you don't, you might regret it later in life when you develop back problems. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to throw your support behind reviews like this, become a member of my Patreon or my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.